Hey guys, today we are looking at lesson eight for estimate sums and differences of fractions greater than one. So after this lesson, we should be able to estimate sums and differences of fractions that are greater than one and that are mixed numbers. So sometimes you'll see it as a fraction that's greater than one or sometimes you might just see it as a mixed number. So let's look at this first problem. It says Alex has five cups of strawberries. He wants to use one and three fourths cups of strawberries for a fruit salad and three and a half cups for jam. Does Alex have enough strawberries to make both recipes? Solve this problem any way you choose. So our question, let's go ahead and underline that. Does Alex have enough strawberries to make both recipes? There's our question. So let's look at the information that they're giving us. They're telling us that he has a total of five cups of strawberries. I'm gonna circle that and I'm gonna write our total. Then he wants to use one and three fourths cups of strawberries for a fruit salad and three and one half cups for jam. Okay, so we don't actually have to solve. We can use an estimate to figure out if he's going to have enough. So if I have one and three fourths, one and three fourths, if I round that, I see about how much that is. Well, I know that one and three fourths, three fourths is more than a half and it's going to be closer to one whole. So one plus one would give me two. So it would be about two. Okay, and then I have three and one half okay so i could probably keep that as three and one half because that is one of those um, unit fractions so now if i have two plus three and one half that's going to give me five and a half so that's about how much he has or he needs so is he going to have enough well he's starting with five cups of strawberries so does he have enough no because this is greater than five cups. So no, he doesn't have enough. Okay, so the second part says, does it make sense to use one cup and three cups to estimate if Alex has enough strawberries? Okay, so if we use this, instead of rounding that up to two, they're saying just have one cup and then two cups. Would that make sense? We could say no, because both whole numbers are going to be less than the actual amount, so that estimate would be less than your actual answer, so that wouldn't work. Okay, we're just talking about that out loud. You don't have to write anything for that. I know y'all hate writing. <laughs> Let's go to the next page. All right, and so remember, these are just telling us another way we can do it. So let's read through this real quick. Jamalia's mom wants to make this si a size 10 dress and jacket. About how many yards of fabric does she need? So this is a size 10 dress and jacket. So you would need 2 and 1 fourth yards for a dress and 13 eighths for a jacket. So we're going to estimate the sum of 2 and 1 fourth plus 13 eighths to find how many yards of fabric she needs. Okay, so it says one way you can do that is when adding or subtracting a combination of mixed numbers and fractions greater than one, convert them into mixed numbers. That's going to be the easiest way is just making them into mixed numbers and then adding them. So we would convert 13 eighths to a mixed number by dividing the divisor, the numerator by the divide, denominator. So that one you're saying how many times will 8 go into 13? It'll go into it one time with five left over. So that's how we would get our one and five eighths. Now use a number line to round the fraction and mix number to the nearest whole number. So that's where they're putting five eighths right here. So that would round to two. So one and five eighths would round to two. And then two and one fourth would also round to two. So if we added them, two plus two would be four, so she would need about four yards of fabric. Now, would that be an over or an underestimate? Uh, it's probably about right, because we see this is a little bit over, and this one is a little bit under. Another way to do that is to use the half as a benchmark fraction. Replace each fraction with the nearest one-half unit. So one and five-eighths is close to one and a half, 
2 and 1 fourth is halfway between 2 and 1 half, so you can replace 2 and 1 fourth with 2 and 1 half. So 2 and 1 fourth plus 1 and 5 eighths is about 2 and 1 half plus 1 and 1 half, which gives you 4 again. So you could do it either way. This is typically the way that I do it, just because it's easier to estimate that way. In my opinion, you do whichever one works for you. Um, but, it's, but either way you do it, you're still going to have to convert that 13 eighths into that, um, that mixed number. Just, just a heads up. Okay, so let's look at the next page. Um, so number one says to estimate with fractions greater than one in mixed numbers, when should you round to the next greater whole number? So we would do that when the simplified fraction part is greater than or equal to one half. So let's write when the simplified fraction part is greater than or equal to one half. Okay, when should you estimate a sum or difference? So what tells me that we're going to estimate a sum or a difference? What word tells me? Normally, typically when we see that word about, we are going to estimate. So when we see the word about. That's going to tell us that we are going to be estimating either a sum or a difference. Okay, so the next one, it says round to the nearest whole number. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say what that fraction is equal to and then I'll estimate it to the nearest whole number. So this one, I know that 4 goes into 11 two times. That's 2 times 4 is 8 and then 9, 10, 11. So that's going to give me 3 left over. So that would be 2 and 3 fourths. But because they're wanting us to do it to the nearest whole number, what whole number is that closest to? Is it closer to 2 or is it closer to 3? it would be closer to three. So our answer would be three. This one's easy because it's already as a mixed number. Yay, easy peasy. So is this going to be closer to one or the next whole number would be two? Which one is it closer to? Two, good job guys. All right, now I want you to do number five on your own. And you should have the number two. All right, so now for six and seven, it says estimate each sum or difference using benchmark fractions. So we're going to estimate, let's box up that word estimate so we know that's what we're doing, to know the difference using benchmark fractions. And we're su you can find the sum or the difference, whichever one. So this one's gonna be a difference, this one's the sum. So now, if I'm using benchmark fractions, I'm going to see that this right here, 5 ninths is about 1 half. So this would be 2 and 1 half because it's about at that halfway point minus 1. Now this 1 third, you could go up to 1 half or you can go down to 1. I would probably keep that at one half because it's going to be bigger. So now I know that one half minus one half is zero, and then two minus one is one. So our answer would be about one. And I want to make sure I put the word about because it is an estimate. All right, the next one. We know that 10 will go into 24 two times with four left over, so that would be two and four tenths, plus eight will go into 29 three times with five left over. So put my five, 
and my 8. Now, that's just putting it as a mixed number. I have to make them into benchmark fractions. So 2 and 4 tenths, remember our benchmark fractions are 0, 1 half, and 1 whole. Okay, so it's either going to be close to 0, 1 half, or 1 whole. So I know that 4 tenths, that's about halfway between 0 and, or my 2 and my 3. So that would be 2 and 1 half plus, I see that 5, also it's about that halfway point. So this would be 3 and 1 half. So now I know 1 half plus 1 half is 1 whole. 2 plus 3 is 5, so 5 plus 1 is going to give me 6. And if you need to re-watch some of this, you're like, I really don't get this this first time. Rewatch it, it might make a little bit more sense the second time. This, some of these practices, guys, you're going to have to do a couple of times in order for it to really sink in. I'm going to be honest, as an adult, I had to rewatch some of the lessons just to make sure I understood it. Um, so I know that sometimes it's hard, especially as a kid, you have to rewatch stuff. So don't be embarrassed if you have to rewatch something because you don't get it the first time. Okay, so now this next one, it says... In 8 through 11, use the number line to round each fraction or mixed number to the nearest whole number. So if you see it as an improper fraction, make sure you make it that mixed number and then see what is it closest to. Okay, so I want y'all to do 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 15, 18, 14, 17, 20. Now, let's flip it over to the back and look at some of these problems on the back. This one is using the recipes to answer the questions. You're going to estimate how many cups of fruit trail mix the recipe can make. So let's go ahead. Remember, it says estimate. It's not an exact amount. They just want you to estimate it. I want you to do part A. I want you to do part B. Again, you're estimating how many cups of trail mix the recipe can, traditional. So this one's the fruit trail mix can make, and this one's the traditional trail mix. So make sure you know the difference between the two of them. Okay, there's two different recipes. And then the list, last one, you're doing it. Estimate how much um, trail mix if you made both recipes. Okay, so that one you have to figure out how, about how much for each of those and then add it up. All right, and then I also want you to go down to the bottom and do 25 and 26. Okay, so if you are doing this and you are with a sub, I want you to make sure you get this turned in and I might put one of these as a silent vote question and give you a piece of candy if you get it right. So make sure you try your best and work hard on those, okay? All right, make sure, rewatch it if you have any questions or you don't understand something so that way you will understand it better the second time. All right, good luck guys.